You are listening to the regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, smrnation.com. You've turned on Sexy Marriage Radio, where the best sex happens in the marriage bed. Here's your host, Dr. Corey Allen. Well, to you specifically, Pam, and to everyone else in the nation, welcome 2022. We made it. We, we made go. it. Here we go with another year. I'm looking forward to it. another year. Yeah. <laughs> Onward and upward. And it's interesting because if you look at the whole landscape of the world and how it all changed two years ago, you know, 2020 mm-hmm. was that what people have called a train wreck or a disaster or, you know, where everything in the whole entire world was impacted. And now they're, we're hoping for just normal, right? We want most people, it seems like, like, how do we just get back to normal? But that makes me start thinking that we don't go backwards in life. We have Mm-mm. to create new normals. Right. We have to create new routines. We have to create new things based on data and experiences and things that have happened. So hopefully we're getting better through what we've come through. And right. Let's just be smarter. Right. Let's be smarter. And let's enjoy things more. Let's um, find victories in the valleys. That's, I guess, mm-hmm. the phrase I love. Houston. And one of the smart things you can do as part of the SMR Nation is continue to hang out with the SMR Nation. <laughs> that, yeah. that there's a, a lot of great things happening and that are coming this year. And so welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us again. Um, and we want to hear from you uh, because as we as we venture into 2022, a, a goal I want to have uh, as we go into this, babe, mm-hmm. is I want a lot more of a dialogue with our shows, which we're going to have that today, Mm -hmm. um, where we get the feedback from people, either feedback at sexymarriageradio.com, which Mm -hmm. you can, and even better is if you would uh, record your voice with your feedback, send it to us via email or Mm -hmm. call our voicemail line 214-702-9565 and leave a message there. It's got to be less than three minutes because it'll cut you off. Um, I can edit and alter voices if need be, but we want to continue a conversation about what's been going on, what the topics we've covered, because it makes everybody better, right? It does. Iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. together. We don't have all the answers. We want to just ask better questions. And sometimes our feedback that we get is better questions that we need to be asking. True. And so all of this gets better. And so that's what we're hoping to have happen. We also want you as members of the nation to help us spread the word. Uh, Jump on iTunes, rate, review, leave a comment. Uh, You can rate and review the show, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Android, Mm -hmm. Google Play, however it is that you listen. Um, Help us spread the word that married sex is the hotbed for sex. Mm -hmm. And there's also a couple of really good things coming up uh, as part of the nation. One is uh, I do this twice a year. Uh, It's time for Man of His Word Mastermind Groups to fire up again. Yep. And so this week, as this is airing, the first full week of January, um, we will be beginning the process of who's a good fit for this round. And so if you are interested, send me an email. You can do it to feedback at sexymarriageradio.com, or you can send it to me, Corey, at smrnation.com. Either one, it'll get to me. Um, but if you're interested in joining, uh, you got to raise your hand. Let me know. You and, then speak I'll, it. and then I'll give you the hoops that you got to jump through to be a part of this process. Um, this will wrap up quickly within the next couple of weeks. And so that's something to jump on board and, and just be better with a group of men because the mastermind groups that I've been doing are some of the most fun things that I do each mm-hmm. and every week. Mm-hmm. And also this summer, June 23rd through the 25th is the Sexy Marriage Radio Getaway. And so we need to do a hard push to make sure those that want to take advantage of it do because there's a discount going on right now. If you, if you sign up for the early bird rate, uh, this is the best chance to get your spot and come join us in Indy in June. Yeah. Yeah. Make those, I guess, if you're doing resolutions to have a stronger marriage, uh, these are good opportunities for you to make that happen, to make yourself better and, yep. and make that relationship better. So coming up on today's regular free version of Sexy Marriage Radio is several of your emails and voicemails. Uh, with your questions and then particularly with your feedback of some things we've discussed in the last year that you would like us to circle back to and we're more than willing to. So 
Let's do it. We're excited about that. And then on the extended content today, which is deeper, longer, and there are no ads, you can subscribe at smrnation.com forward slash SMR Academy. Um, we've always followed the last several years since, since 2016 for me, mm-hmm. but the last several years, rather than New Year's resolutions, we follow the three word mm-hmm. mantra. And we're going to dive into deeper of what the words mean, why we do this, Mm -hmm. because too often I find um, people are haphazard about things and then wonder, why did I not get a productive year? Why did things happen the way they Mm happened? And and this is just an incredible framework to use to help give you a broad enough target to have some variety and some flexibility, but also have a target. Yeah. Yeah. And so we will hope and you'll join us in this, in the extended content. And all that's coming up on today's show. Hey, Corey and Pam. I'm a longtime listener from Canada. I think you guys do a fantastic job. I think you're providing a, a, a very essential service. And I hope you keep running the podcast for as long as you possibly can. And Corey, you've had some great co-hosts, but I think Pam, Pam, you're the best co-host he's had so far. So keep it up. I'd like to talk about an email that came in in episode number 543 at about 20 minutes into the podcast. And it was from a wife whose husband told her that if he had to do it over again, he wouldn't get married to her or anybody else. And and that comment came up after she asked him to be completely honest. And a lot of the show talked about, you know, where he's at and is he really committed to the marriage and really not a lot of focus on her and where she's possibly coming from. And I like to give a different perspective here. And really the nutshell of this is um, I heard a case where she needs to, if you'll excuse the reference, be asked to put on her big girl panties and look at, she asked him to be completely honest and he was. But where are they now? And what do they have now moving forward? You know, she she made no comment about the situation now being bad, other than just how she's feeling about it. You know, she says he's a good, attractive, successful man who treats her well, but she feels like he's being forced to stay because of duty. And she questions his commitment to the marriage. Um, She also says that uh, she's into sex multiple times a week, that they have great sex, but she hasn't always been into it as much as she is now, and she thinks that's what started her disappointment in the marriage. So I'm hearing a situation where, you know, she's, she's really questioning herself, you know, he could very easily be saying, hey, sweetheart, I know we had some troubles in the past and marriage didn't turn out the way I thought it would be. But, hey, I love you a lot now. I think what we have is great and I want to move forward with you and spend the rest of my life with you. But is she able to hear that? You know, she's stuck on that statement about the past and, and stuck on her feelings about it. And, of course, feelings are important. But what's most important is her, is what are the actions that are happening? And she doesn't talk about that in a lot of detail, and I can certainly see a situation where what they actually have now is really good. She's just having to work through th- through some tough feelings about his statements about the past and, and really about where she's at. You know, she talked about, um, you know, questioning where she's at in relation to the sex life. So there you go. I hope you can talk about it from that perspective. I'd love to hear your answer and look forward to hearing it on the air. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, thank you, by the way, for calling in and um, appreciate the feedback on this. Corey, tell me, you know, we're driving at the feelings piece here. Yes, we are. And, and it's interesting because one of the things that did not even occur to me as I think back on that episode is we did slant towards him mm-hmm. more with our answer when he's not the one that emailed in. <laughs> right? Don't know if he listens or not. Okay. And we can have a tendency at times to do that, but we usually we try to be very cognizant of Let's keep it to the emailer or the caller. And, and there is yeah. an element he's, ke- he's picking up on that's vital, which is this idea of she asks a question because she's reading this map of husband and they're having this dialogue. Because typically we don't just have, if, if we're rocking along and getting most everything we want in our marriage, we don't ask those questions of what's up, what's mm-hmm. missing. Mm-hmm. If you had to do over again, would you? Those kinds mm-hmm. of things, right? Because... It's kind of like a lawyer in some regards. Don't ask a question that you don't want the answer to. Well, there's that. <laughs> right? But if I don't ask those questions, I limit the amount of intimacy I'm going to really have in my marriage. Yeah, I'm willing to live in ignorance for a long time and accept only a fraction of what this relationship could be. Right, because there's a lot of times where the way you're framing that is perfect, Pam, that I would rather live in ignorance than have to have the challenge and discomfort that comes with growing. Mm-hmm. because when I get this kind of information, 
like like she got from husband of yeah if I had this whole thing to do over again I wouldn't get married at all. That's a huge hit of like but I thought I was your soulmate. I thought I was you know all mm-hmm. of those kinds of things that are deeply embedded in most people in some regards that have to then be reexamined in real time and on life life on life's terms. Mm-hmm. Because there's an aspect of this that we have to start to look at, okay, how do you recalibrate now when it's not bad necessarily? It's just data. It, it, it's data, but the mapping word I think you have there is key. It, how I'm mapping, it, that affects my me mentally, right? That affects now my the tint in my sunglasses Mm -hmm. and how I viewed our relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's not rose colored anymore. It's got some sort of green algae over it now. And it, it doesn't look as pretty as it did before. Okay. Because I'm, I, I I care a lot about how you think of me, about how you think of our relationship. I want to be adored and I don't feel adored when when you hear the message of, when if I had that. it to do over again, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't? Yeah, sure. Okay. So then you have to ask yourself the questions of what's the difference between feeling adored versus recognizing you were still chosen. Maybe not fully in the manner in which there's as, as, well, added aspects I, to it. Yeah, I guess I would back up and say maybe I don't even feel chosen at that point. Okay. Um, he's still because here, you held so a gun he to choosing. his head? He's still here, so he is choosing. He is, he's not walking away. Right. So the caller is right. And let's look at this perspective. Mm-hmm. What what perspective am I taking when I'm looking at this relationship? And what do I need to change in that perspective I've got? Right. And the first place you start is how you started this conversation, Pam, is this idea of if I put too much stock on my partner's feelings, I'm going to be tossed around like a cork. Mm-hmm. It's just going to happen because our feelings are too flighty and not oftentimes even accurate. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Or, or true. They're just feelings and they can be across the board with situations. So that's where you have to pull yourself back and recognize, okay, I need to take stock and account of the feelings associated with things. That's usually why I have, that's why those questions mm-hmm. come about from maps in interactions and in reading a situation when you're watching somebody you care about and you know, but what are their behaviors? That's what, that's what really is impactful to me. Right. It's not their feelings. Cause if, if I just equate things to my feelings, I become childish way too often. Okay. Yeah. Because, Oh, you hurt my feelings, which means then you need to adjust so that I feel more protected which that's not going to work well in the long run. No matter the way the world has been going, that's not going to work well in the long run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's recognizing I need to face the facts of the truth. And now how do I then shore myself up, validate myself more to see it as, yeah, but I'm still worth being with. Mm-hmm. I'm still a good catch. I'm, and maybe he doesn't see it completely, the level I wish he would, but he is still here. Right. How do I still make the most of it? Right. Because then we get caught in this quandary of this. This is where it falls into my mind. Just thinking about you and I, Pam, we get caught in this quandary of you. It's become evident the last couple of years. You are the higher desire adventurer than I, Mm -hmm. but between us, Mm -hmm. but you're the lower desire wanting to instigate those adventures. Yeah. I still want you to lead that journey. Right. Which is, I, I get it totally backwards, yeah. Right. Well, it's not necessarily backwards. It's just th- that becomes the stalemate, right? Mm-hmm. And so then you have to face the facts of, okay, but if I really want to have an adventure, does it diminish it if I have to set it up myself? Right. And a lot of times it's a script you've got in there saying, well, it felt like it did at first, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe I should try that new uncharted path and see. And yeah. then I realize, wait, that... You know, well, I think it's the same as the the sex journey that we hear from a lot of people. It's not that it diminishes it more. It's just that I want you to want it. Right? And and we say, I, I can't make my spouse want something. I don't care if it's the need for uh, some sort of adventure or, 
you know, quantity right. of sex or a type of sex or, or whatever it is. I can't make you want something. I right. think of that with my kids. We had this, um, you know, over the holidays and I had this expectation of what Christmas day would be. Right. And, <laughs> and anyway, and they have phones now and they have phones <laughs> and, and I get, I hate phones. I hate these phones. I just want to <laughs> throw them on the ground and smash them. And I, I headed out on a walk. I was like, I just got to get away. And while I'm thinking of it, I'm thinking higher desire, low desire. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a higher desire for family time, being together, things like that. The kids don't have as higher des- a desire as, well, as I as the parent. And even that. deeper in there, because this is the conversation you and I had, had had by the fire that night, was it's beyond just a higher desire. It's also that you were wanting them to want to have the exactly. same desire and not just the action, but the, the want to, to exactly. put it away when that's not where they are. And right I now. can't force that, you know, and be out being on a walk. I'm talking to myself saying, and that's where we get this perspective change, right? Mm-hmm. You take, you have to take some time to sit back and look at yourself and say, where am I in this situation? How am I reacting to this situation? is there anything I need to change and evaluate about where I am? Yeah. Have some good self-confronting questions is how you find yourself a a better path forward. Mm -hmm. Just like he's pointing out. Mm -hmm. The art of marriage is really the art of keeping up to date with your partner, of staying on track with your own and each other's life goals as they emerge, exist and change. It's about supporting each other and staying connected emotionally, intellectually, physically and spiritually. Marsha Berger, LMFT. A great marriage doesn't happen by accident. Deeper connection with your spouse doesn't happen by accident either. Have you reached the point in your marriage where there's a slow creep of discontent or disconnect? When was the last time you talked with your spouse about anything other than the schedule, work, or kids? What if there was a way to be reminded on a weekly basis to touch base with your spouse? The State of Our Union helps you remember and discover what brought you together in the first place. It's a tool designed to help couples keep the important from being replaced by the immediate. Plus, this works from your own phone. 52 reminders, deepen your conversation, dream, and plan together. Go to smrnation.com forward slash union. Connect on a deeper level today. This is an email that came in, Pam, that um, a husband was asked by his wife what he wanted for his 50th birthday. So money was a little tight, and he's always enjoyed receiving oral sex, but it doesn't happen very often, maybe like twice a year. So he asked for five encounters that come from his fantasies. Things like waking me up in the morning, back in the movie theater, while driving, etc. Right? Which Okay. A a blowjob in each of these situations. Absolutely. Which I can... Anyway... um, I could tell from her response that she'd rather not, and I think it's because she doesn't enjoy giving fellatio to me. But she agreed to anyway and followed through on all of them except for the one while I'm driving. She said that she still might do it, but she feels uneasy because it can be unsafe, which, hello, Mm -hmm. possibly. So was it wrong for me to ask, given that I know that she doesn't prefer this act? Should I tell her to forget about the one while driving, or should I remind her of it since it's something she said she might be willing to do, and what I could do then is find a straight and long road to reduce the danger? Thanks. So this is that whole proverbial asking for a sexual something as a gift. All right. And he knows she's not a fan. Right. I mean, he can read that. He knows it based on history. Yeah. He knows it on... Uh, the way it all unfolds. And so this is where, to me, what jumps out, Pam, is the difference between um, feelings and desires versus behaviors and actions. Mm -hmm. Because as humans, we have to separate out the fact that we can sometimes do things devoid of our feelings, counter to our feelings or our preferences or our likes even. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's necessarily bad because we do grow in that regard, if I grow into d- doing the things that I don't really enjoy and my, I might actually grow into enjoying it more, you never know. Okay. But I, in this situation, is something he wants from somebody else. Correct. And he's asking them to do something they right. don't enjoy. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so there is this aspect of, is he wrong for asking? No. 
I think that's part of what life is. Life on life terms is I speak into what I want or hope for, and then it becomes, do I get it or not? And how do I handle it? Sure. That's fine. And she can say no when Mm -hmm. she wants. And kudos, this isn't something she enjoys and she did four out of the five for him. That's the other thing that jumps out to me is you got four out of five. That's a pretty good percentage. That's a hall of fame batting average. And Well, I I could read so many things into this, but okay, in the back of a movie theater, that's pretty risky, right? (laughs) Right, I could get in some trouble doing that kind of thing out in public, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I get the excitement of it. Um, I I don't know. I, I don't know that it's in great taste to say, well, here's what I asked for, and then come up later, which she's already, clearly they've already talked about it. Mm She's already said, well, here's my issue with this one. There's a safety issue uh-huh. here. Even if you find a long, straight road where you're the only one on the road. There's still safety issues because you're in a moving co- vehicle. <laughs> so this may be for some people. It may not be for others. Right. And if you go to her and say, well, this is what I asked for and you haven't given it to me. Tone and context would matter and how you bring it up. And so to answer his last questions of, should I bring it up or should I set up a scenario reminder? I would agree with that. You've already discussed it. She's already said, well, here's my thing with this. Maybe you'll get it. And so, you know what? If she does that in the future, take it and enjoy it and and love it. But don't pressure her into it by giving her a guilt trip because she hasn't performed that yet. That takes away the whole joy of potentially giving you this birthday present right and um, that that makes it a resentful situation <laughs> absolutely it can add to it for certain and that's what's so interesting is because we get caught in these scenarios don't we pam where i've asked for something from my spouse sexual or otherwise and they've agreed but then they don't follow through or it's taken longer on their time frame than i would like for them to follow through and somehow i seem to con- convince myself that well maybe they just forgot when well, no, yeah, they I didn't think, forget. They I know. doubt that he actually forgot. Well, here's the deal. It's not that there was an agreement here. It was a, hey, what money's tight. What would you like? And he comes up with some things. Right. Him coming up with those things is not automatically an agreement from her side. Fair. Right? That's, that is it's not, an expectation versus is, an agreement. Yeah, that is not something that I said, no problem. Whatever you say, I'm going to do. <laughs> it's, well, maybe... You know, if you if I ask you what you want for your birthday and you tell me you want, I don't know, a new iPhone, that's not an agreement that I'm automatically going to get that for you. <laughs> right. It's just, right. It's just something being expressed at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So um, enjoy what happened. Don't have a checklist that your wife has to meet for you. Uh, I I would I would argue that. There may be some resentment coming if, Might be. if you're and, trying to hold someone to the fire. On and let's flip like it just real quick, though, because there could be resentment on the other side. I know she's not the one that emailed in to me to ask this question, but I've agreed to something. I said, yeah, I can make that happen, or I've done most of them. Uh-huh. And it, it's also recognizing how do I not hold my partner responsible for my agreements of things that I've said I would do or want to do yeah, also, and, right? Because it's on yeah. both sides. Maybe she said she would, and, and it does go both ways, yeah. And so a lot of times if there's something still lingering out there and it comes up in the course of a casual conversation where it's not a, hey, you haven't or whatever, it's just kind of a, we're talking about the dynamic, that's uh-huh. an opportunity to say, yeah, I'm just not going to do that one. And at least you level set the expectation from that point. True. And that's yeah. a different path to at least go, okay, cool. But I got, I love what we did do. And this is the sophistication of the English language, right? Because I could say, I really enjoyed what we did. And that can be code. Let's keep doing it. I want more of it or whatever. Or it can be, I really enjoyed what was done. Yeah. Because it's usually both of those. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it is some of those things. I'm kind of saying it as a pseudo, let's keep doing it kind of prompt in and (laughs) when we still fall back into the natural dynamics of a relationship and life of one of you's higher desire, one of you's lower desire when it comes to these issues. And I'm not going to change my partner's level of desire. I need to just handle my side of it better. So, you know, I love the idea of you saying, um, what you had talked about of, 
of being thankful for mm-hmm. what has happened. Right. Right. Appreciate what's going on. So the the four out of the five that did happen, wow. You know, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. That was a great gift. That's actually and doubled your, that. your your yearly average from what he said. <laughs> right. <laughs> True that. That's Happy fiftieth. Yeah, if we're if we're talking stat that, then <laughs> <laughs> that's you. that's a great stat, right? <laughs> Well, it never fails that um, we continually get confirmation week after week, year after year, to here, a dec- here a decade into this thing, babe, mm-hmm. of um, we have some astute listeners in I the nation. That. I love being surrounded by smart people, by thinkers. Love it. And we have courageous people that are willing to speak up. Yes. And give and speak back, mm-hmm. <laughs> and call out, mm-hmm. and question. And my hope is from this whole entire show. My hope is that we all recognize we all can be better. Mm-hmm. And so, when the spirit of speaking back at something is coming from the best in us, it is met by the best in those that hear it. Mm-hmm. That is a without fail truism in the way I do therapy. Because people have asked me in the past, man, how are you able to just be harsh, quote unquote? And if it's coming from the best in you and it's more truth, it's met by that in people. Because we know it. Right. It's interesting how one person can see something as harsh and the other one that it sees it as um, just speaking truth to them. Uh-huh. It, and... The filter that we put on things the yep. yeah, I, I, I realize there's a lot of history to that for people, you know, yes, how absolutely. I was brought up, how I was spoken to when I was, what, what trauma maybe I've had, but I hope that people can, um, can see that the truth being spoken to him can be a good thing if I take it and I run with it. Right. If I look right. at even if I have the better. pause of the momentary pause of what am I missing here? Mm-hmm. What if this is true? Maybe what it's not the, true. <laughs> what if this I, is I, something I really yeah. need to because even that momentary pause is huge. That's what we do with the emails that come in. Yeah. Of of recognizing, okay, hold on. Where is this coming from? What's the story that's really being asked of yeah. me here? What do I really believe in this? Mm-hmm. Because we get too quick to defend ourselves rather than recognizing, okay, wait, if I'll think it through or rethink it, as one of my words is, if yes. you're in the extended content, then I get an opportunity to solidify what do I really believe? Mm-hmm. And now how do I live alongside somebody that doesn't believe the same, but it's not a threat? Mm-hmm. It, uh, we can actually be allies in a lot of other ways. We can mm-hmm. actually be beneficial to each other in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And, we can, and we can speak from the best in us. Because as Schnarch would say... The best in us is the only thing that can call out the worst in us because Mm. the worst in us would deny its own existence. True. And that's what we're calling upon everybody in the nation and ourselves Mm -hmm. in 2022. Mm -hmm. And so this has been Sexy Marriage Radio. Um, Wherever you are and however you've chosen to take some time out of your week to spend it with us, we are so grateful that you did. And we'll see you next time.